Chris Gaffin here. I'm on the East Coast. We're in Tampa, Florida. I'm here for a few weeks and I come into the powerhouse gym here in Tampa and look who I bumped into, Aaron Stern. So two times Miss Olympia and figure Olympia and lifetime natural athletes as well. We've got a fellow lifetime athlete here and we've decided that we're going to bunch up together and put ourselves through a workout. We've decided upon legs or you did when we put the post out to, social, to the social networks. So we've decided to kind of come up with a hybrid of uh, instinctive adaptation, if you wish. So Aaron's going to begin with putting us, uh, putting me through a bit of a workout, and then depending on how tough she's on me, I'm going to try to get a little bit tougher on her. What do you reckon? Yeah, let's get started. Yeah, okay. okay, so we're going to start with dynamic step ups. This is a great warm up exercise to fire up the central nervous system and get the blood pumping. may look a bit of a dick, but I'm not going to look too much of a dick by trying to do it like you. No, what you want to remember is you want to drive the knee to parallel and you want to dorsiflex the foot. This is going to help with your athletic ventures too. Counting? I think I think you're at the limit there. Yeah, good. Okay. <laughs> Just because Aaron put me through those, uh, what do you call them? The box steps. Dynamic step ups. Dynamic step ups. I'm gonna have my own back now because she never does uh, a lot of volume and she doesn't do supersets. So I'm gonna do volume and supersets. So we're gonna do box squats here, but we're using a bench here because the box is a little bit too low for somebody of my age. We're gonna use the bench here, and then we're gonna go to the rack squats here. So what you'll find. Going through this exercise, yeah, you'll feel it like your quads and your hamstrings and your glutes. You know, you'll decompress and fire up a little bit. Not too much because you said of your, you know, compression of the spine, yeah. And then you will really feel it throughout the quads when you go to the to the rack squats. So to begin with, we'll stick to the same weights. Normally you would go heavier on a rack squats, but because we're doing a volume of around 20 reps, more if you've got it, um, you know, you'll feel it just with that weight, so you'll be good. So let's uh, start off with this. So box squats straight into the rack squat. We're using a slightly wider than shoulder width stance on both of these movements. That's it, perfect. Making sure your neck is in line with your spine at the same time. That's it. There's always people that have a bad habit of looking straight into the mirror, even when they're down deep, and extending their neck. That isn't alignment with the spine. How many are you up to, or am I counting? <laughs> I have six That's it, perfect. Easy. That's it. Slow that negative down just a little. Just a little. That's it, easy. That's it. Good. That's it, just let it, that's it. You can press the weight. Then off. That's it. Fire up. Walk it apart. Oh, I don't know what you guys want to do about weight. You still got spring in your step. Ah! 
Man, that was tougher than I thought. See, the 20 or 30 reps there, that was relatively easy. But then as soon as I got to the quads, it's just really isolating the quads here on the rack pulls. Yeah, that's where I felt it too on this exercise. Yeah, you did, but you just didn't show it. I just cried about it. <laughs> no, I, see, I, I scream on the inside. I don't ever yeah. see my pain. <laughs> see, uh, us men look for sympathy. That's why we scream. So we're on to the second set of box squats and rack squats. I'm going to bump up the weight on the second superset to 225 and we'll see if I can do it. That's it, seven, no stopping at the top. Eight and down. Nine and down. Ten and down. You're going to rest anyway, rest of the bottom. Let's see, yeah, good. Standing slowly down. That's it, fire, one more. Here's your 20. Seven, come on. Eight, easy. What you got in there? Seven, come on. That's it, seven, rack it slowly. Back up, that's good. Two, come on, number one. Four, that's it, good move. Walk in the park, let's go. Yes, come on. Tony, you're gonna make me look bad now, keep going. So going on to the third set now, I honestly thought that I was quad dominant because you know it hits, hits a lot of your hamstrings and your glutes when you're doing the box or the bench squats, we'll call it now for today. But then when I went on to the rack squats, my quads were killing me. Now if you looked at Erin, you know there was just blank face, stone face. The pain was inside, so she says, but who would know? But I'm like screaming here. But now I look like a dick if I don't go up weight because she just did the same weight as me on the rack squats. So we're gonna go up and see how badly this turns out. So this set isn't a requirement, but it is for me to save, save face here because I'm representing the men out there. No way I had three more in there. I stopped at 12, so it was pretty tough. Oh. Man, that was good, though. Feels good. Hateful during it, but it's very nice after. Okay, so I just put Aaron through what is considered my exercises, and at the end here, I was actually trying to rip the weight off, thinking, why is it so heavy, and I'd left the collar on. So obviously the blood has gone somewhere other than my head. And then Rick here, the cameraman, is actually helping me off with the weights, not Erin. So I don't know what's happening here. Now she's putting me through one of her exercises, which is called? This is a single leg, straight leg deadlift with a hex bar. Okay. So I've never used one of these bars either. And, uh, all right, so I'm going to start with my non-dominant leg. Yeah, so you yeah. start with your weaker side. 
And then you're going to balance with the ball of your foot on your stronger side. Okay. And straight. Yep. Ooh. You don't want to lock your knee out completely. Okay. So you want a little bit of a bend and you want to stretch as, as long as your back is flat. When your back starts to round, you've gone too far. There you go. Make sure you have the weight on the ball of your right foot. Okay. So you're not you're not balancing too much on the right foot. You're putting most of the pressure on your left side. There you go. So I usually do eight on each side. Uh, we'll call that eight. There you go. And then just reset, go straight into it. Come on. Okay. This side should be easier. So same thing. Go nice and slow on the negative. And really think about lifting the weight with just your hamstring. Oh. Wow, God. I found that really hard. Yeah. I found that really, really difficult. Especially after that. After that, yeah. I know I should be feeling it more throughout my hamstring, and I guess because it's just a new exercise, I'm trying to get my neuromuscular pathway yeah. to where it should be. So I am feeling it throughout the lower back as if I'm doing a deadlift, but I guess it'll come over the subsequent. And if you go slower, a lot of times too, like I'll push my hips back and that oh, yeah. tends to hit more hamstrings than lower back. So yeah. it's, it's a matter, especially with the free weight exercises, to use a lot of angles and when you slow it down, you're able to focus on that mind-muscle connection and really target the muscle groups you're aiming to target. I tell you what, they say leave the ego at the door. I think mine is back in Wales now after seeing you do this. Like, people are probably watching this and thinking, God, oh, Chris, you're a pussy now, you can't keep up. But it isn't so much. She's a badass. It's more sports-specific training. So, it's an exercise that I would normally do. So, I think it's a little bit more familiar with it. Okay, that sounds yeah. good. We'll go with that. Okay. Okay, so I need to start with this leg. Yeah. Make sure you get your... Put all the weight on the supporting foot to the ball of foot. Yeah, so it's just like on the toes and, and like the ball of your foot, but very close. So you almost want to point that toe and get as much weight off of this foot as possible. No, the weight off this off foot. Off of that foot, yeah. Right, okay. So right, gotcha. And then focus on pushing your glutes back too, and that'll hit more of the hamstrings. Okay. The analogy that I always use, and you probably use it as well, pretend there's a midget behind you and you've got to push them into the mirror with your ass. You haven't used that one? Oh no, that's the one that I use. It didn't catch on then, obviously. That's a little creepy. <laughs> well, I have creepy thoughts. <sighs> Surprising. Felt it so much harder on my stronger leg then. I think because I'm still involved in the lower back. And oh, then you're heaven. balancing probably quite a bit with the stronger leg, which is why one of the reasons why we like to do a second. Right, okay, you're yeah. Strengthening your non dominant side. Yeah. It's an attempt to, to balance out both sides. In bodybuilding, as you know, symmetry is really important, yeah. not only for stage, but for injury prevention. Yeah, so, stay aligned. Yeah. Okay, 
so back to my territory now, or so I hope. We're going to go on to a leg extension here. We're super set in that with a vertical press here. The understanding is that we've done a lot of hamstring work now. We want to try to direct that more onto quads. So we're going to pre-fatigue on quads here. We're going to do a straight set of around 20 repetitions or wherever failure may fall. And then we're going to up the weight by about two plates. And then we're going to do partial repetitions to really target the rectus femoris, you know, teardrop, the vastus medialis, right around the kneecap area on these partials. So, uh, and we want to see if we can get an expression out of uh, Aaron's face here because it looks too easy for me. Okay. So Aaron's leaning right back here to make sure that we take the flexors out of the equation, keeping her upper body completely static. What you'll notice sometimes that you bring your flexors and your abs into it to make it easier. I'm going to make it easier. I'm going to be that spot. What are we up to? Are you counting? Ten. Ten. We're halfway. Eleven. That's a contract. Twelve. Easy. Thirteen. Looks so easy. Fourteen. Good. 15, 16, you got more on you? 17, let's keep it going then. 18, come on. 19, best set. 20, yes. Okay, let's put in a couple of plates heavier. Okay, and now just as far as my hands now. Leaning right forward, that's it. Smaller, slower. That's it, good. Four, five, six, good. Seven, eight, good. Come on, nine, and you're halfway. 10, 11. 12, good. 13, come on Aaron, let's go. 14, number one. 15, tap my hand. 16, easy. 17, come on. Eight, last two. And one, nice, good. Perfect. Was there an expression up there I didn't see? Okay, and straight onto the vertical press. And the feet are at the bottom of the plate, or as low as she can go. Again, just to target the quads. No stopping at the top yet. Three, 16, good. 17, back down. 18, good. So the idea is why I personally prefer not to pause unless we get towards the end. Is that ATP only lasts in our system for so long, you know? Yeah, we're trying to encourage sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, but we're trying to take advantage of the myofibular hypertrophy and the ATP that kind of supplies that energy for us because you know it doesn't last too long. So I just like to get it over and done with like a band-aid, you know, mm. right off. Right, okay, so this is my first set. I just started on here on Aaron's weight. I was like, geez, is that the weight that you were doing? So I have to go heavier, so this is going to be uh, an entertaining set. Let's see if we get this done 20 reps. Now, do you squeeze at the top, or do you just Fine. use your momentum? I'm not using momentum. What do you want about? <laughs> That's my muscles moving, not momentum. There you go. I'm just giving you our time. You don't have to, just play the sentence. Good job, I got a trainer, yeah? <laughs> that's the whole stack? That's the whole stack. Correct. Jog up to the Santa Monica stairs, sprint up, walk down, lunge back, do that three times. I'm really looking forward to this. <laughs>
the front. <laughs> that was more fun than the leg extension. Yeah, that was good, man. Coming down. Yeah. I had to hold on to the banister first of all. I thought, God, if I are sitting here, man, that ain't gonna be too impressive. But that's good. I really enjoyed that then. As much as I hated it at the time. Yeah, it's a good way to get cardio in while lifting weights at the same time. Stay off the treadmill. Yeah, exactly. So is that what you do? Instead of doing cardio separately, you would do that within your workouts? Yeah, I would, towards the end I would incorporate finishers. So we'll do like farmer's carries, overhead carries, maybe sled pushes. You know, so you reps. never do traditional cardio? No, I'll walk outside, but I like to call cardio the stay fat zone. People never change when they stay in that area. It's important to mix it up, you know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So when you uh, get ready for competition, mm -hmm. you never do traditional cardio. It's always something like this within the workout. Yeah, I'll walk outside, like I said, but that's a lot for like mental clarity. Yeah. Yeah, I try not to get on those machines. No, Except for the stair climber. Stair climber, like for, the, yeah, rolling like stairs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and that's awesome. No, that's yeah. good because like, Normally, you would consider a leg, work, leg workout cardio anyway, you yeah. know, especially if you're doing volume. But if you put a, something in there like that, I guess it helps build your lactic barrier yeah. as well. So you, maybe that's why you were kicking my ass, actually, <laughs> when we were doing a lot of the traditional stuff as well, because your lactic barrier is that much more conditioned, you know, and you know, Except maybe... For a, the workouts that you do, so after like 12 reps, I was feeling it. You're like 20 reps, so I'm thinking, oh God, I can't do it anymore. No, but you did good there because like it looked easy for you, you know, maybe like you said, inside it wasn't. Right. But you know, I guess I was just trying to look for sympathy when I was screaming and crying during it. But it's good to mix it up to do something different. You know, as we all know, if you do what you've always done, you get what you've always got. So if you mix things up like that, not only is it going to benefit your physique, because it's going to benefit your consistency because sure. you're going to be more motivated to come up and you know come into the gym and do something yeah. creative. If you you know if you've got boredom workouts, it's because you're not creative mm -hmm. within the gym. You know, it's a playpen here. There's lots of toys to play with. You know. Yeah, especially this gym. <laughs> yeah, it's a great facility. All right. Well, are we done now? Yeah, if you want to be done. You're I want to be done. Okay. I want to be <laughs> yeah, done. I want, I'm, I'm going to tap out here. But that was really awesome. So. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Thank you very much. Thank it you, was Chris. an absolute was awesome. pleasure. Yeah, it was great you. taking advantage of uh, the visit down here. Because yeah. I learned something today. I I'm learned gonna... a lot too. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay, so we're both going to be future champions for years and years to come now. Thank you very much.